White Van Men by David McGrath. Wanted. Man with van. Pick me up. Take me to quiet place. Then without saying a word, give me the fuck of my young life in the back. I am not a working girl. It's just what gets me off. It's without saying a word that gets them. They're not interested in what women say. Pretending to listen is exhausting for them. Pick her up, fuck, drop her home, if it's on the way. Being used solely for his dick, that's a man's dream. Oi! Let me the fuck out! This one says. You bitch! You fucking cunt! I'm gonna strangle you, girl! You hear me? You're fucking dead! I break hard and hear him slide along the floor until he slams into the partition that separates us. I thought the 6,000 year old kiss was so romantic when I first saw it. You cunt! You fucking cunt! He says. I break harder. The tires screech. He slides. Hits the partition with such a thump I think I hear his collarbone pop. He starts to get the idea. This 6,000 year old kiss, it's two skeletons they found in Iran. One skeleton lies there with his head caved in and the other has a hand ever so softly to his face. Oh God, kissing him so tenderly. And as the dirt was thrown in on them, buried alive, they were frozen for 6,000 years in this one beautiful Christ almighty moment. You crazy fucking bitch, he says. Let me the fuck out, he says. I go, come up with something I haven't heard before, and I'll let you out. People know where I am. That's a lie. Lying makes baby Jesus cry. <laughs> When I researched more, I found out that the 6,000 year old kiss is two men skeletons. They're not 6,000 years old at all. And the caved in skull was done by an archaeologist who dug them up wrong. And the kiss suggests they were family, the way Asian men hold hands. It's just the way they buy each other pints over in Asia. I'll, I'll give you money, he says. Sure you will. All 30 quid of it, yeah? I've heard it all. Once, a poor fella called me a cock teaser. Me, after giving him 5,000 volts with a stun gun, duck taking him up in the back, then driving on in his van, him in the back, and he starts getting really angry because I didn't... <clears throat> but yeah. And not to gag them. I say, I can keep breaking all the live long day. You'll work for what you wanted for, just fine with broken legs and a fractured skull. What are you talking about? He says, proper scared now. What does that mean? Next comes pleases and grovels and waterworks. Please? He says, what did I tell you? It's a science. It'd be mad if you could write a Facebook status now, wouldn't it? Duct tape up in the back of my own van, heading to unknown location, possibly West London. Kidnap it is a crazy brunette bitch cunt. Help, I'm really <laughs> fearing the worst here. Please? He says. This is not a joke. Call the police. To be better than the usual tribe on there, wouldn't it? All baby photos and who's eating the most delicious fucking noodle soup or some shit. I say, if a tree falls in the woods and nobody posts a photo of it on Facebook, did it fall at all? I like that, he says. It's very clever. You are very clever. Why, oh, thank you. Maybe you're not.
not such a bad fella after all. I, I am. I I'm a nice fella. Are you respectful to women? Absolutely. Do you see them as merely objects of your sexual desire? No. Well, of course not. Mind if I take a look in your glove compartment? Don't! <laughs> I laugh. I don't do this because I'm a man-hating feminist, repulsed by the selection of dirty pornography he undoubtedly has in there. I'm not the victim of any sexual abuse, nor was I locked in a dark room for days on end by an evil stepmother. I don't, and never have, worked in the sex industry, and I have never tortured animals. I'm not a psychopath, as far as I know. But when I researched psychopaths, I found they're just people without a proper conscience to decipher between right and wrong. So I don't know. Maybe I am a psychopath. I do it for the money, I tell him. It's all about the money. Speaking of which, here they are. Standing in their little spot like their two kids waiting for a school bus. White shirts, knee-high shorts and dicky bows, even holding lunch boxes, though they're not filled with sandwiches. A pair of weirdos. They look like they're 14 with their curly hair and porcelain smooth faces, but when you look closer, it's their eyes give them away. That checklist I just went through, these two wouldn't be able to put as many knots in it, believe me. A pair of absolute Overmothered, screw loose. I nod as I slow roll to a stop, engine still running. They open the side door of the van, get in, shut it, and I drive on, starting my stopwatch. What's going on? he says. The weirdos laugh. Get off me! he shouts. What are you doing? I'm not allowed to jam on the brakes to stop the shouting from here on in. The noise is their responsibility now and I'm not telling the freaks otherwise. I just concentrate on not making any sudden turns or hitting any speed bumps. I take it nice and casual. Not fast, but not too slow either, brushing the speed limit just right. Like baby bear's porridge. <laughs> no, 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 please boy, stop, stop! I turn up the radio. As usual, phone in chat shows about football, as though they all know something about it. What music have you got? Ah! Surprise, surprise. Neil Diamond. <laughs> I turn on Capital. There are worse things to listen to than Beyonce. I heard this story once, and it was told to me as true, so if it's a lie I'm telling you here, it's a lie I was told. A heart belonging to a man that killed himself, was transplanted into another man. Now the wife of the man who committed suicide tracked down the recipient of the heart. <laughs> but anyway, they hit it off. He's grateful for the heart, and there's a living piece of the man she loved inside this new man. So they fall in love and get married. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my God. What a beautiful and romantic story, if a little tragic. But, a few years into the marriage, the new husband kills himself in exactly the same way as the first husband who killed himself. I mean, to a team. I mean, it's unbelievable. No! No! Jesus! Stop! 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 You're thinking, Jesus, she must have been some bitch to drive two men to it. <laughs> or you're thinking, Jesus, what a vindictive prick that second husband must have been to go out the same way as the first guy and thus scar her for life. Or you're thinking, maybe that heart made people kill themselves that way. All of it's open to interpretation. <laughs> Look, I don't know what the little fucking weirdos do in the back. Well, not exactly, anyway. I don't, I don't even know what they are, medically. I don't think there is a term for them yet. They don't want them gagged, so they like all the shouting. So, I mean, I could speculate. I could 
should draw conclusions based on what I see when they're finished, but it's different every time. Sometimes there's not much to see, and sometimes, well, sometimes it's, sometimes. Ah! Just kill me! Just fucking kill me! After that tsunami hit Japan in 2011, the spiders that usually stayed on the ground moved up into the trees because of the flooding and spun their webs up there instead, completely covering the canopies of whole forests. Imagine, imagine candy floss. That's what one tree looked like. Now imagine a whole sticky, sugary forest of spider web. That's what it looked like. And the greatest fear after the tsunami was malaria because of all the stagnant water and the population explosion of mosquitoes. But the spiders, with their webs up in the trees, caught, killed and ate them all. And an outbreak never arrived. I'm not saying men in white vans are mosquitoes. I'm just saying sometimes we need spiders. I'm early. So I circle very slowly, making sure nobody is dogging in the parked cars or bird watching in the bushes. 90 minutes, 56 seconds. 90 minutes, 58 seconds. I slow roll to a stop. Engine still running. The little weirdos open the side door of the van, get out, close it shut, and I drive on. I know we can use stories however we want, can't we? Put whatever slant on them we need to further our own agenda. Someone told me, and I think it's very good, he said, history is not the past. Like that. History is what we want it to be. Yeah, I do. I really like that. I get to my farm in the late afternoon. It's an hour outside London. I drive down to the quarry, reverse onto the ledge and park. I get out, a bit of a stretch and open the slide door. Take the money, make sure it's all there. Then, Christ, they've done a number on this fella. I close the door again, take off the handbrake and push the white van over the ledge into a decade of decomposing men in their white vans. Partly entwined down there with tyres and axles, rusty wipers, smashed windscreens and intemperate dispositions. All with faces of horror on them. Some hanging out their vans with guts spilling and cursed hearts burst open, staring with sickly thick grins, immersed in fear. A swirl in their final moments of terror and pain, their eyes still calling me every name under the sun. I should cover it up. I know, it's, it's ridiculous leaving it all uncovered like this. I'm asking to be caught and if the weirdos found out, I'd be down there with the men in the white vans. It's just, I like looking at them. I'll sell the farm soon, when it's rezoned as residential. I'll cover it all up then, and they will be under people someday, normal. Good people raising families in their starter homes, hopeful and trying to do well, loving each other and wanting nothing but the best, working long hours for school trips and uniforms, and they'll never know their foundations are made of angry men in white vans, just below the surface, raging and screaming threats of murder and revenge, drenched forever in their own fear and hatred. I don't know. But I do wonder, not in terms of it being art, but I do wonder, in 6,000 years when they dig it up and exhibit its story to the world, what are they going to say happened here? <laughs> what will they call it? 